Monday, June 19, and time for your Barbados Day afternoon update. So glad you could join us. I'm Kemar Jordan. Barbadians are at this hour breathing a sigh of relief with news that this island has been spared the impact of a potential tropical storm number two that is continuing to threat across the region. The Met Office has discontinued the storm warning for the island, which was issued yesterday. Deputy Director of the Met Office, Claremont Williams, tells Barbados today that a small craft warning and a high surf advisory remain in effect but the island is unlikely to experience the severe weather conditions associated with a passing storm. There's still a chance that we can see a few showers as we go through the, the afternoon into the evening and so on. But what it really means is that in terms of the level of wind speeds that were initially anticipated, uh, that, is no longer, that no longer poses a threat. And while the island will escape any major impact this time around, Williams is urging Barbadians not to let their guard down over the next six months with predictions for an above average hurricane season. Bear in mind that we are in the hurricane season and it really only takes one system to create problems. Uh, one direct hit, one direct impact can set us back uh, years. So. We continue to advise preparation and precaution. In the north of the island, fisher folk and boat owners are, however, not taking any chances. When our news team visited a number of areas this morning, including Weston and Port St. Charles, several people were on the beach moving their vessels to higher ground. We've learned well from certain eventualities that exist during, uh, especially around the marine course or sea course. Um, one thing we do is an early preparation, get the haul boats from the sea, you know, and anything that we be, believe that will become an obstacle in the way, so that in case there's an event then, that we will have to be after effects will be as drastic as they would, they would be. So, say so we are on the ball. That incident where we didn't take the advisory serious, mm -hmm. and then we end up in trouble. We had to swim out, then take the boats to the complex. Okay. So, as soon as the guys here, any weather coming, we just take it serious. Any like I saw here, got some boats, some, some small, some small boats. Somebody put up for it this morning. Some small boats that we got to be here this morning. Okay. But the bigger boats are going right now to get the work here for you. In other news, this Monday, the owner of the pit bulls that caused the death of 74-year-old Verona Gibson last January has been granted $65,000 bail. Peter Christopher Rock of Monroe Road, Haggett Hall, St. Michael, was not required to plead to the indictable charge when he appeared in the District A Magistrate's Court this morning. However, the 48-year-old chicken farmer denied that he was the owner of the four-year-old pit bulls and that he unlawfully kept the dogs without applying for a license from the Ministry of Health. He also denied that the dogs were in a public place without being kept on a lead or a leash. The accused has been warned not to keep any dogs until the court matter is completely settled. He will reappear in court on July 27. The Royal Barbados Police Force is yet to respond to a controversial video making the rounds on social media in which a police officer attached to the task force is seen kicking a civilian. The video was recorded at the Waikiki event at Pirates Cove last night. Police had to be called in, including task force officers, to control the crowd as patrons reportedly broke down a fence in a mad scramble to get into the event. Several people were detained and the fete was abruptly ended. When contacted this morning, the police public relations spokesman, acting inspector Roland Cobbler, said the force is looking into the matter. So positive news now, at least one local supermarket says it won't immediately be hiking its prices when the increase in the National Social Responsibility Levy takes effect on July 1. The tax, which is to be applied on imports as well as some locally produced goods, you will know was announced in the recent budget and is to move from 2% to 10%. But economists have warned that the overall cost of living in the country will rise as a result. However, a fresh market located in the villages at Coverley says its prices will remain the same for July. Coming to the end of July, we we'll analyze and assess you know, how that has benefited both us and the consumers. And we may, may look into extending it you know, for the period into August. And I'm basically challenging all other retailers you know, to do the same thing to help our fellow Barbadians you know, try to get through this, you know, this tricky, tricky period. 
Some more weather news now on the regional scene. Vincentians, particularly those in the southern Grenadines, are on high alert for the passage of the approaching tropical disturbance. Forecasters have warned that the Grenadines can expect the brunt of the impact, including gusty winds and moderate to heavy showers and thunderstorms. The National Emergency Council was meeting this morning to fine-tune preparations. In Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago, authorities are also keeping an eye on the approaching system. Meanwhile, regional carrier Caribbean Airlines has cancelled several of its flights due to the approaching system. These include services between Antigua and Barbados, Port of Spain to Barbados, and Barbados to Port of Spain. The cancellations will also affect passengers travelling to St. Lucia, Grenada, Guyana, and Suriname. Customers are advised to visit the carrier's website to check their flight status. And of course, our neighbours in the region are in our thoughts and prayers at this hour. On the international front, the United Kingdom is reeling from its fourth terror attack in four months. One man was killed and 10 people were injured when a man drove a van into worshippers outside the Muslim welfare house in Finsbury Park. Eyewitnesses say it was clearly an attack on Muslims. All of a sudden, a white van drove uh, at very high speed into the, the, the crowd and he did it deliberately. We know it is a criminal, it is a terrorist act. And when he finished what he did, he said, uh, I did what I had to do, something like similar to that. We managed to get him out of the car, but he punched me one on the head. He was really shouting and aggressive, uh, bad words and something like that. So we didn't talk to him, but he was just spitting on us. I was trying to stop him. Some people, they was hitting him, but I said, don't hit him, just stop him. Keep until the police come. One of them, he was under the van. People were gathered around the van um, to, to actually lift the van up to get this guy up from under the van. I mean, people in the most prayed. It's Ramadan. We don't need this. You know, I don't know why they're doing this. We're looking for peace. We're looking for... Uh unity we don't want people uh, to uh, divide us this is our message to everybody well the british prime minister theresa may strongly condemned the incident saying hate crimes will not be tolerated as i said here two weeks ago there has been far too much tolerance of extremism in our country over many years and that means extremism of any kind including islamophobia and that's a wrap. For more news, however, you can log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We also have Zoomy medium bus terminals or screenplay in a supermarket or a gas station near you. Also, check us out on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Remember, it's still wet out there. There's some high winds, so do be careful.